Hello there and welcome to Inside Intercom. I'm Liam Garrity. This week's guest is Stripe's Head of Strategic Accounts Americas, James Diet. James has had a fascinating and varied career. He previously worked at the sustainable development nonprofit, the Global Environment and Technology Foundation, before gaining more experience through an internship at the National Economic Council at the White House. He then became a product manager for Castlight Health before joining Stripe in 2016. In today's episode, Intercom Chief Revenue Officer Leandra Fishman chats with James about business lessons he learned in the early days that he's carried with him and how to ensure product innovation is meeting customers' needs. James also shares his advice on how to cultivate a customer service mindset among sales teams. James and Leandra also discuss Stripe's new app marketplace, of which Intercom was launched as one of its first apps. It's a great conversation. So let's head over to studio. Hi, James. Welcome to the show. We are so delighted to have you with us today. I wanted to start by getting a sense of your career journey to the point that where you are now. Tell me a little bit about how you started out and how you became the head of strategic accounts at Stripe. Well, thanks so much, Leandra. Um, my, my story starts in a bit of an unconventional way. The first five years of my career, I was president of a nonprofit called GETF that was focused on building public-private partnerships to expand access to clean drinking water in Africa and South Asia. And what we did really well was bring corporations that used a lot of water together with foundations and government agencies to fund projects. And over the course of that time, we launched programs that expanded access to clean drinking water for over 2 million people. From there, you know, the most eye-opening part of that experience was seeing how it was actually small businesses that were having the most impact on the clean drinking water crisis because they didn't rely on long-term donor support and could self-fund maintenance and repairs for, say, a broken water well. And so I got really excited about business, went and got my MBA, moved home to San Francisco after 16 years on the East Coast and overseas. Um, started a job as a product manager at Castlight Health, and then joined the Stripe sales team where I still am today. That's amazing. First of all, what an important mission, uh, clean water for everyone. And I love that you had that experience. And also that you've really had a broad perspective on everything from business to the business aspect to product to now it seems like the sales side of things. So I'd love to hear a little bit about how your role with Stripe came to evolution. Sure. So when I was at Castlight as a product manager, I realized that my favorite part of the job was spending time with customers and really understanding their problems. And I, I noticed it was the sales folks at Castlight that got to do this all the time. And so I, I realized at that moment that I wanted to spend more time in sales. I also had a realization at the same time that my first Part of my career in the nonprofit world was fundamentally a sales role because I was ultimately speaking to foundations, to corporations, et cetera, not about how we can use technology to solve their problems, but how we can address their goals around corporate social responsibility. So in some sense, there was this aha moment that I was getting back into sales more than I was starting sales for the first time. And so then I started looking around at companies and my main focus at the time was not industry. I didn't know anything about payments. I wasn't focused on the size of the company or title, but really wanted to go to a place where I would learn a ton from people who I really respected. And Stripe stood out far and away on that dimension. I love that. The history of sales is that everyone is a salesperson, regardless of your role and title, right? <laughs> Communicating value. Anymore. Yeah. And really connecting in with customers and helping understand how we can solve problems. It's, it's, it's something that I think when you have that in your essence, it really enhances the overall customer experience. And what's interesting too, that you were in such a stripe at it kind of an early stage. And so are there any business lessons that you learned from your early days that you've really you know, kind of kept top of mind and carried with you through the years as you've continued to grow as a company? Yeah, I, there is. And I'll, I'll share one that I think is a bit unexpected or was unexpected to me at the time. So in the, in the very early days, I joined Stripe, we had about a dozen or so sales reps. And at the time, we were more focused on startups and 
mid-market growth technology companies. We hadn't sold to large enterprise technology companies, but that was the next segment we wanted to go after. And so we decided to start a tiger team focused on seeing what would need to be true to move up market and trying to get some early wins with customers that we thought would be a great fit for the products that we had at the time. And, you know, so our, effectively our goal was go and earn revenue from larger customers. And we were successful there, but I don't think that's where we had the biggest impact. The biggest impact we had was we quickly learned that these larger customers had very, very different needs from our existing install base, but our install base was growing at such a rapid clip that they were quickly going to have those same needs and we needed to get ahead of them from a product perspective. And so that Tiger team spent a lot of time with our product team focused on what new features we would need to build in order to meet the needs of our existing customers. So the, the business lesson for me was that you need to start selling to where your customers are going to be, not just where they are today. And looking back, that wasn't what I expected that team would ultimately do, but I think it's where we had the biggest impact and, and ultimately influenced our strategy to retain our existing base of customers, even though the stated goal was to bring in new revenue from much larger users. Such good insight. I think that is a really important note for everyone that we can take with us is noting the future of that evolution for the customers that you have while noting that many times when you go up market, as you mentioned, those large customer needs are different than the, your maybe smaller customer needs. Um, but in general, serving both of those visions for that ultimate customer value and experience will, will take any company into the right direction in the long term. I think that's right. And that's where, it, to me, it comes back to, and it sounds like, you know, this is where you're at, that sales fundamentally is a part of product research. We're the voice of the customer. And so if you don't understand a certain customer very well, one way to understand them better is to stand up a sales team and just go talk to them. Absolutely. And I love that you have that perspective, especially being ahead of a strategic accounts leader. Tell me a little bit more what that role involves and how you think about understanding the customer really impacts your day-to-day -day strategy with your team. Sure. So as head of strategic accounts, I lead a team of sales professionals that are supporting the companies in our region, which is the Americas. So the United States, Canada, and all of Latin America. And those strategic accounts are ones where we have a partnership, you know, where those, those customers are using the, the Stripe platform in a particularly significant way. And they hold a very, very high bar for payments performance. And a big part of my job is working closely with our cross-functional teams to make sure we're meeting the unique needs of these strategic accounts, who are often bellwethers for what the rest of our customers are going to need, um, because they're at the cutting edge often of what's happening in payments or around the commerce ecosystem more broadly. Yeah. And, and in that, being that relationship builder, especially at that critical point where you find your customers, are there any challenges that you see in your role? Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, we today work with millions of businesses at Stripe and their success is our success. And by virtue of that scale, it's always going to be challenging to serve the needs of every single customer and do so at the same bar that you hold yourself to and have held yourself to over many years. And so I see my role in this high growth environment as ramping and coaching and mentoring all of the new sales professionals that are joining our team and also making sure that we continue to hold a really high bar for the success of these new customers. And that's hard when you're scaling really fast. I mean, these are great problems to have, but they're also, it's a crucible moment, I think, for any company is how do you handle that hyperscale moment? Because otherwise, you know, if you don't get it right, you risk losing the, the trust of the customers you've spent so long trying to earn their business. 
Yeah. I mean, that, I think what you have really nailed is that word trust. That's so much at the heart of building great customer relationships and also just communication in general. Are there any golden rules or maybe tips that you have that you found successful in communicating with clients and customers? Yeah. And actually it's, it's the fact that you use the word trust. That is one of them. So I have sort of two rules for communicating with clients. The first is around building trust. And you may have seen this, Leandra, in your career, that a lot of sales professionals, they get worried about giving their customers, you know, quote unquote, bad news. So, you know, we're going to have to delay this feature or we won't be able to meet you on commercial terms. And so they'll, you know, they'll often avoid the conversation or try to water it down. But those are the moments when if you communicate early, clearly, and with empathy to customers, that's when you build trust. And those are the the most important moments, I think, in building those relationships with customers to grow a partnership over the long term. So that's number one for me. Number two is always starting with the customer's challenges or aspirations. So again, I think a big mistake we can all fall into as sales professionals is we want to talk about our product or our solution. We're so passionate about it. I'm really passionate about what Stripe's built, and I want to talk about Stripe. That is not the way to speak to customers and show that you're user first. Everything that comes out of your mouth should be about how you can solve their problems. You should be able to demonstrate that you understand their problems. And they'll remember that and they'll, they'll see that if you speak that way, that fundamentally you're aligning your success with their success, and that's going to create a virtuous cycle for you as a salesperson. A hundred percent. I don't think I could have said it better myself. I think really your articulation of connecting to the customer challenge, the customer pain, how we're going to solve their problems as, as any you know, vendor or partner would want to is critical in nature, especially as you, you mentioned early on about building the right product. And so when you think about product innovation and the intersection of that with customer needs that create the deeper relationships that you mentioned, what factors go into you giving that information back to your products teams so you can make sure as a company, you're really driving to build the right things to meet those needs. Totally. So this is, I think, one of the most important jobs of a sales professional. It's one that we don't talk about a lot is how do we guide our product teams to build things that our users are going to love? I have a few rules internally that I keep in mind when I'm speaking to product teams. The first is that we always have to remember what I call the the must-haves. So we have to keep an incredibly high bar for performance and reliability, even if that means postponing a launch or you know rewriting a you know web page for and doing it for another round. It's always important to think about the worst thing that could happen to a customer is we don't meet their needs around performance and reliability. So that's that's something that I think salespeople can communicate to the product team that it has to be a, a P0 in the innovation process. The second is, you know, we always need to be listening and we always need to be thinking about not how do we dazzle a user with a product that they've never thought of, but instead zoom into, you know, those mundane everyday challenges and help them perform a variety of functions that they maybe haven't been able to perform without your solution in the past. And so it's those two things that I think if you can keep that in mind when you're speaking to the product team, you know, first is just it, the product has to be reliable. It's got to work all the time. And the second is to focus on the specific problems that users are telling you they need help with rather than perhaps some product innovation that's a function of a lot of internal excitement, but that hasn't been vetted by the market. I really think that that highlight of that customer success, customer service mindset is what sets good companies from great companies, really sets them apart. And empowering those teams I know isn't easy. Is there any advice that you have for companies out there that really want to foster that amongst their sales teams and their products teams together? Yeah, I think the first thing is you have to hire for those values and you have to make that part of your interview process. So every time 
somebody on your team is talking to a prospect, they should be testing for, is this person users first? Are they humble? Are they curious about customers they've worked with in the past? And when you're discussing whether to hire somebody, that should be a big part of it. Is this somebody that I can picture with a customer first mindset when they join our team? Because the easiest way to create that culture is to have it walk in the door every time you add a new person to your team. The second is to make sure that the customer first mindset is part of regular performance management. So, you know, managers do tend to focus on the numbers and that's an inevitable part of sales, but we should also be framing feedback about the how of sales. And, you know, that means, you know, yes, did you hit this number, but how did you hit this number? And what problems did you solve for your customers? And what problems are you going to solve for your customers this next quarter? That needs to be a big part of how performance management happens. And then I think finally, and this is a really simple one that perhaps can help those folks listening to this podcast is, you know, when you're a manager and you're reviewing an account plan, always ask, how does this help the customer? And I'm surprised that simple question ends up really refining and improving how we show up as a sales team for our customers, even if it's something that we, we think about every day, just asking the question leads to some great conversations and, you know, allows us to change our approach and think, well, you know, actually we, we could help the the customer more if, you know, X, Y, Z. So those are, those are three ideas for you. Well, the just you saying the how of sales has got my mind already cranked in a couple of fun ways that I can inspire my team to be bringing that type of mentality. So thank you for sharing that with us. Sure. Now, I'm really excited to talk to you also about the recent news that Intercom has launched one of the first apps on Stripe's new app marketplace. And I would love to hear you tell me a little bit more about the Stripe app marketplace and what you know about the Intercom integration. Absolutely. So Stripe has been working with partners for a long time, but Stripe apps is a step change in how we do that. And effectively, what it means is we can bring for our customers an array of tools together and create a one-stop shop for managing operations related to Stripe with a ecosystem of partners. So let's talk about Intercom. The Intercom app integrated into Stripe allows customers to investigate issues and answer payment queries, approve refunds, and, and much, much more. So what does that look like? For example, a customer support agent using Stripe could see that a customer is requesting a refund through Intercom. They could issue the refund through Stripe and even use Intercom's app to reply to the customer directly to let them know that the request has been completed. So you can imagine that as a customer, that's such a great experience to say, you know, I'd I'd like a refund and then to have that executed in real time and get a note from a customer service agent through Intercom. So we're thrilled about the one plus one equals three potential of the the Intercom and Stripe partnership. The power about that seamless experience that you mentioned, I think, are going to get people really, really excited. And I know one of the reasons that Stripe chose Intercom as a launch partner was because of our shared commitment to personalized, in-context customer support. And so I would love to hear a little bit, we've talked about, you know, the commitment uh, that we have to our customers and why this is really important to Stripe at this time. Yeah, absolutely. And our view is to To compete in the internet economy, businesses are going to have to use a wide variety of software tools. So they're going to need Intercom. They're going to need Stripe. They're going to need a whole host of solutions so that they can focus on the core differentiator for their businesses. And from my perspective, integrating with Intercom is just one step to providing that one-stop shop for managing operations and facilitating automated sharing of contextual information across apps keeping systems of record in sync, giving users a fuller view of their business. So we, I think, really see the world very similarly, which is we want to make it a lot easier for and provide the sort of underlying infrastructure. And I think that's what makes Intercom and Stripe so similar as businesses is we're core infrastructure for businesses to be successful. And so we're successful when our customers are successful and, you know, we're, we're behind the scenes. And I love that about both of our businesses. 
yeah, making it easy for customers to service their customers, uh, I think is going to go a long way as we continue to have the changes in technology in our environment of how we interact every single day. So it's exciting work to be doing together. What's next Definitely. for you? Do you have any big plans or projects this year? Well, you know, 2022 is, I think we can all agree, has been quite a year with a lot going on. And so we're really laser focused right now on on how we can help our customers through what is going to be and has been a, a tricky economic period. So a lot of time on my side is spent how, you know, going back to the discussion we had earlier, Leandria, about customers first. Well, what are the things our customers are most focused on right now? It's navigating this year with, you know, inflation, the changes in, in the fundraising market, with consumer sentiment. And we want to be a partner for them there. So we're spending a lot of time on our side trying to think about how we can be helpful, you know, in this in this period. Yeah, each year it seems like brings a new set of adventures and hopefully opportunities for, like you said, to us to help our customers solve problems of whatever's top of mind for them. Uh, so yeah. I definitely agree. Everything that we can do to, to make it easy for our customers to navigate through these times, I think is going to be essential. Totally. As we wrap up here, I'd love to know where our listeners can go to keep up with you and the work that you're doing at Stripe. Absolutely. So you can learn about the latest updates on stripe.com slash news or our Twitter account at Stripe. So you can say hi on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. And thanks so much, Leandra. I really enjoyed the conversation. James, thank you. I really enjoyed chatting with you today. That was Leandra Fishman talking with James Diet. You can read more about the Stripe app marketplace on our blog. The link is in the show notes. Okay, that's it for today, but we'll be back next week with more Inside Intercom. Thanks for listening. This is Inside Intercom.